Frank is concerned with the attention Jesse's erratic behavior attracts in the papers. While a small time Missouri criminal named Bob Ford is following Jesse's every move. Bob Ford was this media saturated fan. There's no better way to get close to the object of your admiration than to join his gang. And maybe in some way become a little bit like him. That's the picture of Bob Ford that we have today. At this point, Jesse James is losing his edge. Historians have proven that he starts abusing laudanum, an opium-based painkiller that's still legal at the time. His abuse of laudanum only adds to his fanaticism and helps to trigger his downward spiral. No, no, thank you, son. I ain't your son. Nah. Rick. Drink it! Frank just kind of run to the end of his strength. <laughs> Jesse is carrying on a war. It no longer has a place in this changed America. Now, these are not 19-year-old bushwhackers anymore. Time is catching up with Jesse, and his personal war comes with a heavy price. Desperate to keep up the fight, Jesse recruits the Ford brothers, Charlie, a petty thief, and Bob, who idolizes Jesse. I need more whiskey. Need more whiskey? No problem, Jesse. We need a job, Jesse. You got those coaches coming up. We could use Bob as a lookout. We'll, we'll see. Watch what you say in front of him. He ain't one of us yet. The people he surrounded himself with were no longer the professionals. These weren't the youngers. These were amateurs. I've been hunted for 21 years. It was one long, inexorable, eternal vigil. I was tired of an outlaw's life. Seeing Jesse's new and inexperienced crew, Frank parts ways with his brother. Jesse begins to sink into a dark mood. He wears a holster at all times, even while sleeping. He's unbalanced, paranoid, and more dangerous than ever. Jesse James became delusional. He was likely to be experiencing symptoms of schizophrenia as a result of years of engaging in violence. Jesse's anxious, but for good reason. He has a weakness within his inner circle, the Ford brothers. At this point, the Ford brothers, they're living in the same house with Jesse, and they're agitated because they're scared. We need to kill him, or he'll kill us for sure. Young Bob Ford, what do you have for me? I have access to kill Jesse James if you'd like. In the late 19th century, it is common for governments to offer rewards for criminals. But Missouri Governor Thomas Crittenden, a former Union officer, goes much farther. 
he offers Robert Ford $10,000 and a full pardon to kill Jesse James. You have no more to talk about. It's a government hit on a U.S. citizen, turning a loyal disciple into a hired assassin and a serial killer into a target. Jesse James is haunted by his violent past. The effects of war, crime, and acts of terror tear away at his sanity. His paranoia casts a dark cloud over the Ford brothers, who unknown to Jesse have been plotting to kill him for a $10,000 reward. Charlie and Bob were looking for an opportunity. Jesse's wife had made breakfast, and they see Jesse do something that he's never done before. What's your family doing, Charlie? Really good, Jesse. So for this simple son of a bitch right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, Jesse. while Bob Ford and his brother may have initially revered Jesse, when the opportunity came for them to get money, reputation, they took advantage of it. Jesse! Killed him! No, I didn't do it! Legend has painted Jesse James as a hero of the people. The truth is, he's a damaged child turned soldier and criminal, a violent sociopath with enough charisma to charm the media. He made his mark while he was alive, but in death, he becomes larger than life, an icon of the real West. Dozens of photographs are taken of the body to prove it's the notorious outlaw. For millions of Americans, the legend of Jesse James has lived only in their imagination. Later that year, Frank James surrenders to Missouri authorities. He's quickly acquitted of his crimes by a pro-Confederate jury. Bob and Charlie Ford never get their $10,000 bounty. They're forced to settle for a full pardon from the governor for murdering Jesse. Two years later, Charlie turns the gun on himself, committing suicide. Bob Ford is murdered by a Jesse James admirer a decade later. Over the years, Zerelda makes more money from her son's death than the Ford brothers. She begins charging tourists 50 cents to see the grave of the country's most famous outlaw. For another 50 cents, she'll even provide a pebble from his grave. We're not idolizing Jesse James, the man. We're talking about Jesse James, the myth. And Jesse was not a benevolent soul who robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. He was a psychopath. <laughs> 